Okay, I wanted to take just a second to go through how to solve linear inequalities or systems of linear inequalities when you've got a calculator. So we're going to run through a couple of these things. Uh, make no mistake about it, you do need to be able to do these by hand. A calculator is a very good tool, but it's not going to handle everything. Um, and a lot of times it's just easier to graph it really quickly by hand, get a good sense of what it looks like. And you're going to need to sketch something on the paper anyway. So the calculator is going to be a tool, but it's not going to do everything for you. So I actually have assignment 2.6c up here, solving systems of linear inequalities on a calculator. I've got a picture of the, uh, the TI-84. TI and I will tell you this right off the bat. Um, some calculators have a, it's called an inequals app. So if you were to click the app button right here, um, and pull that up. Um, what you'd want to do is you'd want to hit the apps button, then you'd want to hit the alpha button, and then the I, because depending on how many apps are on there, um, it might take a while to scroll down to the I's. Um, always make sure that you're resetting your calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my calculator because uh, you know you never know who had it before. So I'm going to go ahead and hit second and plus. That's the memory. I'm going to hit seven, um, and we're going to hit uh, seven, and then one, and then two to go ahead and reset. So it's cleared everything off. If I hit the Y equals, I'm all set to go. Now, if you go to the Y equals menu, um, you'll notice that it usually looks just like this. But if you look at this picture right here, um, over on the side here, I've still got my Y1, Y2, and so forth for the first and second equation, third equation, and so forth. But you'll notice that these each look a little bit different. There are actually quite a few different options that you can go through. There's seven options. You can change the thickness of the line. You can shade above or below the line or the curve that you do. So there's above the curve and there's the below the curve. Um, this is a little path circle that, that uh, goes through and traces it as it graphs it. Um, and then you can make a dotted graph as well. So there are a couple different options and you can toggle through those. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like uh, as we put this one in here. So we're going to go ahead and solve this system right here um, on the calculator. So we're going to go ahead and put in 2x minus 3. So 2, then x is right there, minus 3. We're going to hop down here. We're going to put in the other one. Don't worry about the inequality right now. Um, we're going to make the gra this graph the ca the, uh, the what the graph looks like. Um, and then um, we're going to figure out whether or not we have to do the solid or dotted lines. So this is going to be a negative, And I'm going to do an x divided by 2. Again, lots of different ways to put in those fractions. And then I'm going to do a plus 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over here. I'm going to go all the way over. If you go all the way over, you get on these little uh, line marks right here. So I'm going to go up here, and I want to make this one a shade above. So the first thing is this uh, blinks on and off. You can see that this is just the normal line. So if I hit Enter, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to do a very thick line. And then the and next option after that is it's going to be the line with shading above the line. So you'll notice that I've got them listed right here. So is that what I want? Do I want this to shade above the line? Well, the answer to that is yes, I do, because the y's are greater than that. So now I'm going to hop down here. Um, and let's run toggle through these options. I want this to be below there because the y's are less than that. We want the, the y's to be less than the line. So we're going to hit Enter. There's the big fat line. There's shading above. And then there's shading below. OK. Now, um, I'm going to hop on the end here. Okay, or hop on one of those. Remember, you got to have the equal sign on in order for it to graph. Um, that is all set up to go. It looks like what I want. This is going to uh, graph that line shade above, which is what I want here. This is going to graph that line shade below, which is what I want right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit um, zoom six for the standard window, and it's going to look like that. Now, depending on what your graph looks like on the paper, you'll notice that we go from negative 8 to 8 and from negative 8 to 8 here. So we could make this look a little bit better by doing that. So let's go to the window. We'll play around with that just a little bit. Let's do negative 8 to 8. And the cool thing about this is once we get this set up, um, all of the windows that we graph on are going to look exactly the same. Now, you don't have to do this, but it kind of matches up so that your calculator looks a little bit more like the, the, the graph that you're going to be putting on your paper. So we'll go ahead and hit graph, and there it is. OK, now what we've done is we've reproduced this picture right here. Now, the awesome part about this is if you want to know where they intersect or you want to trace along here, that still works. So we're on uh, Y1. We're at 0, 3. If I hit the up or the down arrow, it's going to hop on the other one. So that shows me we're, we're at 0, 1. So we're at the Y intercept there. And if I wanted to figure out where these cross, so I know where to graph this, uh, where, to, where to draw the intersection. So I'm going to hit 5. And then, of course, it's Enter, Enter, Enter. 
it's for the guess. So it's 1.6 comma 0.2. So it's barely above the, the, the x-axis. So about 1.6 comma 2. So we're going to make it look like that there. Um, so about right there. And then, of course, we could have that point right there. And then we'd, we'd be able to, to draw those. And the cool thing about this is when you draw this on your paper, you could actually say, OK, let's take a look at this. Yep, that was a solid line. Yep, that was a solid line. And then you can just shade here. And then you're all done. You don't have to mess with graphing this, shading it, graphing this, shading it, and then erasing part of the line or part of the shading that you didn't need. OK, um, now if you want to use the Inequals app, you can probably find some tutorials online. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Apps menu on mine. It does not have it, and I'll warn you right now, not all calculators do. There are ways to download that and stuff like that. But again, it, it's just a tool. You would be much better off to just use the, use the technique that we're talking about here. Go ahead and put it in yourself and think about it. Okay, let's go ahead and do a problem from your assignment here. We're going to take a look at number six. So flip over to the back side. I've zoomed in here just a little bit so we can see the problem a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this first one for y. We're going to put that in slope intercept form. So I'm going to do that by subtracting x. So that's going to get rid of it from there. I'm going to have negative 8y. And then subtracting doesn't change the direction of the inequality. I'm going to have negative x minus 48. And then we're going to divide everything by negative 8. So when I divide by negative 8, that is going to change the direction of the inequality. That's going to change it to a less than. We've got a negative divided by a negative. That's a positive. So I'm going to write 1 8 x. And then this is a negative 48 divided by negative 8. So this is going to be a positive 6. So I'm going to graph this line for sure. It's going to be a, a dotted line in that case. And then I'm going to come down here and take a look at this one. This looks like a bit of a mess. Let's see if we can clean this up. I'm going to subtract 9x here. So that's going to leave me with 8y. And then subtracting doesn't change the direction of the inequality. We're going to have 9x, negative 9x, minus 32. It's a good thing that goes in evenly with the 8. So we're going to have a y equals, sorry, y greater than or equal to. This is negative 9 8 x. And then this is minus 4. So we're now going to have the calculator help us figure this out. Now I want to show you something that's nice about this. We've got these old uh, lines in here. If I just hit the clear button on this, you'll notice that it changes the status of that line, whether it's shaded above or below. So I'm just going to clear this off on each one of them. We're basically reset to scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and put the red one in. So this is going to be 1 8th. So I'm just going to do x divided by 8. x divided by 8. That's a quick way to do that. And then plus 6. And then the next one is going to be negative 9, and I'll do an x, so negative 9x divided by 8. Um, again, you could put that fraction in front using the fraction palette, the alpha y equals. That would be totally OK. And then we're going to do minus 4. I'm going to double check and make sure that I've got the right thing put in there. Looks like we're in pretty good shape. Um, and then uh, we're going to come over here, and we need to change how this is going to shade. So I'm going to go to this first one. This needs to be a less than. So we're going to toggle through these options right here. That one's shaded above. Now that's shaded below. Then we're going to come down here. This one needs to be shaded above. So again, we'll toggle right through there. And that one's shaded above. So then we'll go ahead and graph this. And again, I'll set up the window so that this goes from negative 8 to 8. So negative 8 to 8 in each direction. That just kind of makes it look nice since that's how big our window is. And then we'll go ahead and hit graph. All right, looks good. OK, so I'm going to come over here, and we're going to find the point where those intersect. So we're going to hit second trace. We're going to do, let's see, an intersection right here. So we're going to do 5. And yep, that's the second curve. We're going to take a guess. It tells me that they intersect at negative 8, 5. So I'm going to come over here on this, and I'm going to go to negative 8, 5. OK, now I know on this, this red one, I know that that crosses at 6. So I'm going to make that cross right here at 6. And it's a dotted line. So I'm going to go ahead and make a dotted line like this. We'll put an arrow on that. And then the other one, this one comes down here. It has a y-intercept of negative 4. So we're going to make that cross at negative 4. And again, this is the intersection point right here. This is a solid line. So I'm going to make that go through right there, make that look kind of nice. Put an arrow on the end there. And then the shaded part of this is everything that's in between. We can kind of see this double uh, cross hatch shading here. So we're talking about this region right in here. Okay. 
So there's our answer. It might be nice if we indicated what this point was right here. Again, we figured out that that was on the calculator, negative 8, 5. Um, and then this is a dotted line. This is a solid line. And then if we did need to pick a solution point on here, anything in the shaded area is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, let's say we pick the origin. That's a nice point. So 0, 0, that would be a solution point. All right, good luck with the assignment.